the climate change trans counseling sequence. <clears throat> Are you going to stay indoors and play video games all day? Come on, I thought you had school. Mom, school's been canceled. I'm concerned about climate change. <laughs> well, don't you have some protest you can go to? We've got people coming over. We need the PlayStation. Fine, whatever. Where's my stupid sign? <laughs> climate, 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 please don't change. Climate, 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 please don't change. Facts, facts, go facts. Hey, Skyler. Hey, what's up, Tyler? I thought you were going to skip this stupid protest. Yeah, I wanted to. God, I'm so bored. I wish we could go to school. <laughs> That'd be cool. Reading books, learning stuff. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, back to work. Climate, climate, climate. Please don't change. Climate, come on, put some feeling into it. Climate, climate, climate. Please don't change. Climate, climate, climate. Please don't change. Okay, thank you, thank you, thank you. It is wonderful to be here today. Wonderful. It is amazing. What you young people are doing here today is nothing short of a protest. Now, I am a teacher. Don't worry, I'm one of the good ones. You don't see me teaching today, no. Because I'm down here in the trenches with you, fighting alongside you, because I too care about climate change. I'm always surprised as a teacher that I have so much to learn. And I think my... <laughs> I would have to say, I think my greatest teachers are my students. <laughs> I learn so much from my students because my students are my greatest teachers. And I would say that my students' students, their greatest students are their teachers. <laughs> well, not all their teachers, because some teachers' students, who are students to their students, don't want to learn from their student teachers. I'm not naming any names, but <clears throat> Donald Trump. <laughs> Donald Trump. <laughs> but we need to teach those teacher students. They need to learn from their student teachers. If not from teachers teaching like teachers, then from students teaching like teachers. Because teachers are the students' greatest teacher for teachers. Because they can teach us. They can teach us that need to be taught those that teach themselves are their greatest students and the greatest teachers in one student-teacher sort of hybrid. <laughs> Sorry, I, I just made myself dizzy saying that, that. I'm going to get down there with you guys right now and turn it over to your next speaker from America, Senator Ron Dallas from Nebraska. Thank you, thank you. Uh, what you young people are doing here today is nothing short of a media event. Uh, well, that was going to come later. That's good, though. We've got a plant in the audience, a shill, but just a little bit later. Hang tight. He's, he's not a heckler. He's got a line, but it's just a little bit. Jump the gun, but wait. Wait till I say military. We have this happen sometimes on the campaign trail. <laughs> what you young people are doing here today is, is something absolutely amazing. And I think it's a shame that those of us who should be leading are following instead. And those who should be following are leading. Because we leaders are the greatest followers of your following. Well, not all leaders. Some leading leaders, instead of following the following, are leading. I'm not going to name any names, but uh, Donald Trump, <laughs> Donald Trump, <laughs> yeah. Uh, it's a bit like that student teacher, teacher student thing, that student who was teaching about the teacher teaching him taught us. <laughs> now what we are engaged in, in this war against climate change, is a war. <laughs> and I know a little bit about war. I've served my country in the military. I know all about the military. <laughs> I served my country in the military. The what did I do in the military? I was a... Uh... Very good. 
What did I do in the military? I was a, a counselor for transgender soldiers. <laughs> I don't often talk about it. I saw a lot of horrible things, but if I... Uh, if you are interested, I did sell my story to Hollywood. They're going to turn it into a motion picture called Hormones on the Front Line. Okay, Charlie's in the bush, okay? Be very quiet. We don't want another ambush. Here we go. No! We got a transgender soldier down the front line. We need hormones on the front line now. <laughs> How's it looking, Doc? I'm not gonna lie. It's pretty butch. No! <laughs> Sorry, I had a flashback. My name is Senator Ron Dallas. When my parents named me Senator many years ago, <laughs> It was their hope that one day I would grow up to become a doctor. Well, I went my own way, just as you young people are going your own way. And my own way is to follow you in your own way because I, too, am concerned about climate change. Yes, I am. <clears throat> now, I just want to say real quickly before we introduce the 16-year-old child prodigy, Greta. <laughs> I just want to say that I know a lot of you young people are concerned about your future. My brother runs a profitable oil company that has recently started to diversify into building wind turbines. So if you want to hand me your CVs, I'll make sure he gets them. Also, November is uh, election time. So don't forget, I'm Senator Ron Dallas. And this November, I want to be Congressman Steve Johnson. Help me become somebody else. So... Now, as, as much as we Americans might want to take the credit for Greta Thunberg, I think the Brits got to her first, so I'm going to turn over the honors to uh, our friend from MI6, Sir Humphrey Standard. <laughs> <clears throat> what you young people are doing here today <laughs> is nothing short of something very well coordinated to the untrained eye look spontaneous. <clears throat> As a um, former member of Her Majesty's uh, Secret Service, of course, I'm obliged to keep the strictest, strictest secrecy. So whatever I, whatever I say from this podium to this gathering must not exceed the bounds of Marble Arch. <laughs> so shall I trust you in secrecy? Shall I? Yeah. Yeah. Let me be forsworn. <clears throat> Over the past 10 years, those of us in national security have grown increasingly concerned about knife crime, jihadi terrorism, the perennial grooming gangs. Um, but we've grown increasingly concerned that people aren't concerned about climate change anymore. <laughs> and therein lied the match that struck the spark, that created the flame, that became known as the Greta Thunberg Project. <laughs> now, Britain did not do this alone. As we know, Britain can do nothing alone. <laughs> Britain can do absolutely nothing on its own, especially England. England, bound in with the triumphant sea, whose rocky shore beats back against the envious siege of watery Neptune. Now it is bound in rotten parchments and inky blots, a slave unto itself, England that was wont to conquer others is now a shameful conqueror of itself. Wrote Shakespeare, ironically, <laughs> about what would eventually become the European Union. And then real quickly, I must remind you young people to get out there and get active. We need a 12th referendum. And, <laughs> and we promise this will be absolutely the last no returns, touch wood, no, the absolute, we swear that no more, 12 and we're done. You're watching BBC News Future, I'm Lababa Willowick. 
The date is 14th May 2045. Tempers grew heated today in Parliament over a debate about the 12th referendum over Britain's entry and exit from the European Union. The MP for Folkestone and Hythe spoke earlier. May it please the uh, right honourable members, uh, myself along with most of my constituents are triscodecophobics, which means we have a fear of the number after 12. Um, <laughs> so much so that we won't even utter it, and if we do hear or see it, we must say seven, seven times. Um, this notwithstanding, um, if there is a 12th referendum, who's to say that there won't be a number after 12 referendum? And that would be bad luck for us, who are not only triscodecophobics, but also Brexiteers, uh, and we think that that would be the one that the Remainers would finally fucking win. <laughs> The inspiration behind the hit musical, Everybody's Talking About Jamie, about a northern boy in a small town who wanted to wear a dress to his high school prom, is about to get another inspiration. Kathy Ridgemont is in the north. The north. Bleak, desolate, sorrowful, miserable, drugs, guns, murder, working class. <laughs> It's also the home of Jamie Campbell, the 16-year-old drag queen, all now grown up. I'm so excited. My dad's got six months to live and I've always wanted to wear a funeral dress. So I can't wait till he dies. I'm gonna wear a Chong Sum dress, you know, little China girl dresses. I'm gonna eat a telemesu in the front pew at my dad's funeral. So far, he's kept his secret between himself, the BBC, and his fat, ugly mum. <laughs> I don't know why my dad, left, my dad left my fat, ugly mom. She's so fat and ugly, but I love her because she's so tolerant, intolerant, and understanding, and accepting, and fat and ugly. With only six months to go before his dad dies, Jamie is looking for dresses. I don't like that. I don't like that. Ooh, I don't like that. I'm so nervous. What if he lives? Then I, <laughs> then I won't get to wear my chung sum dress and eat a tenemesu in the front pew of my dad's funeral. The big day is finally here. His dad is dead and about to be laid to rest. Father in heaven, we commend our brother to you in... What the Christ is that? <laughs> oh, don't mind me. I'm just here mourning my dead dad in my chung sum dress and eating a telemesu in the front pew of his funeral. Right. <laughs> he is survived by his son. No, not quite. <laughs> by his daughter. No, not that either. By his gender fluid non but no, I'll give you a clue, it's about the monarchy. I'm a drag queen. Okay, listen, Sonny Jim, I happen to be the last believing vicar in England. So either shut your lipstick gob or fuck off and wipe that sparkly shit off your fucking face. That man does not pay his license fee. <laughs> And now, the BBC News Future takes a look back at 5,000 years of LGBT history. Tonight, the takeover of Wandsworth Town Library by a group of American gay men in the year 2035. We had some friends in Wandsworth, and this was right, it was a few months before Pride. Or, no, it wasn't Pride anymore, they changed the name, it was Arrogance. Um, <laughs> yeah, well. Well, I think they thought by the time you're wearing gimp animal outfits in front of the Metropolitan Police and getting selfies, it's kind of like a little bit past that. Anyway, um, so my friend said they have these wonderful old pictures of Wandsworth Town in the foyer. And I said, mm, not really interested. Do they have an LGBT section? And she said, no. And I'm like, oh, great. Got to do something about this. We need an LGBT section in that library. So I rang up Papa and Papa was on. And as soon as he became librarian, the whole thing changed. Okay, I'm Papa. Let's get to it. Okay, what do we have here? It's, come on, arrogance is coming up. What do you have? What is this? Oscar Wilde. What is that to me? Importance of being earned. I don't care if he wrote the holy fucking Quran. Was he gay? Okay, take his fucking face, put it on the felt rainbow. Come on, guys, stop wasting my time. Let's go. Let's go. What is that? Robert Graves, gay or straight? Okay, on the fucking rainbow. Let's go. Okay. George Orwell, do not waste my time, please. Okay, you, here's what I need from you. I need a headless male mannequin in a Carmen Miranda dress, okay? And I want lots of little trans counseling, free trans counseling leaflets all around that. And by the way, where the fuck are my trans counselors? I asked for these two weeks ago. Look into that. I'm going to see what this hobo wants. Yes? Uh, sir, I'm just drifting through town. Uh, just trying to get enough money to, well, hell, get a bowl of, bowl of soup and a crust of bread, sir. Uh, just want to see if you might have any work I might try my hand at. 
look, this depression has hit us all. I'd love to help, but I just can't. Sir, I've not, I've not worked and going on six months. I got mouths to feed at home, sir. I can do anything, sir. I can, I can chop logs. I can slop hogs. Hell, I can raise a barn, cook, I clean. Can you do any trans counseling? <laughs> well, I don't know, sir. I, I'll tell you one thing, sir. I'll be willing to try. Okay, you're hired. Come on. Here's your desk, here's your chair, there's their chair. Okay, real simple, they're gonna come in, just woman is man, man is woman, basic confusion. Okay, just do something witchy on them, okay? You ready for your first one? I'll send them right in. Are you my counselor? Uh, y yes, I am. Sometimes I put on my mama's bra and rub up against the pole. <laughs> Maybe you want to cut your pecker off? <laughs> You're the kindest, most understanding doctor I've ever known. <laughs> Is that dirt on your fingernails? Uh, no, it's nail polish. I thought there was something special about you. Thank you, doctor. No problem. Have a good day. Send in the next one. Hello. So, uh, how, how, how are you doing? Oh, uh, pretty good. I'm, I'm, I'm living the authentic me. It's wonderful. I've got a great new job. I'm, I'm doing the anchor for the BBC News Future. And in fact, I'm still working right now, so I'm going to talk to you later. The climate, it's 2045 and the earth is still here. Something that climate change activists said would never happen. But a recent climate change activism study shows that the fact that the earth still is here still proves that it's climate change. <laughs> See, we said it was going to not be here, but then it's here. Like we said it was going to be warm and it's cold because that's like change, right? Climate change, hello. So this is a scary sight. What we're calling for people to do, okay, no more flights, no more cars, no more trains, no more food, no more air, and just die. If we're not willing to lay down and die as a people, there is no way the human race can survive. <laughs> It's 2045 and we're still here and we can still make a difference, okay? Because what you young people are doing is amazing. We must get out there. Don't forget, ask for a 45th referendum and we promise this will, we swear it's the ultimate, top secret ultimate, this will be the 45th one. Now, we promise you Greta Thunberg and we're going to give you Greta Thunberg. But again, Britain did not do this alone, it was a transnational affair. So I'm going to turn it over to Dr. Heimlich Maneuver from the European, <laughs> from the European Union Committee on Stuff. <laughs> the question was simple. <laughs> the concerns about the climate and wed it to the fad of mental health awareness, all under the rubric of the youth movement. And that's when the answer came to us. <coughs> With a little bit of pink heads. Ladies and gentlemen, I give you the Greta Thunberg. <laughs> Mommy, where are you, Mommy? I see a light. So we have a set on poltergeist. One second. <laughs> <laughs> My name is Greta Thunberg. When I first heard about climate change, sorry, I can do it this way. When I first, she doesn't need the microphone. No, she doesn't, no. When I first heard about climate change, I could not believe more people were talking about it. I saw a woman talking about her dead son. I said, why are you not talking about climate change? There should be a lipstick called climate change. So it will always be on everybody's lips. I come from Sweden. Has anybody been to Sweden? 
Well, Sweden is the Mecca of... Well, it's just Mecca. That was a little joke. When I first heard about climate change, I could not eat, I could not sleep. I did not want to go to school. What was the point of learning my ABDs and 2 plus 2 is 5 when I have climate facts? Also, I have autism. Which means having autism means the whole world must revolve around me. But if there is no world, I will have to revolve around myself. Greta, this is the hand, my hand. You will have heard of Greta, but you will not have heard of me. I am Beata Thunberg, Greta's younger and less famous sister. Greta was supposed to be at this climate change conference, but she met with a terrible accident. And we hope she gets better, better Greta. <laughs> like Greta, I too am concerned about the facts about climate change. But I'm also concerned about the facts about Greta. <laughs> Greta says she is autistic, I am autistic too. But she went to Dr. Hufengelfen. I went to Dr. Heinfenfeinfen. So I am more autistic than her. This is not a bash Greta thing, this is about climate change. Greta also said that she stopped eating after she learned about climate change. So did I, three days before Greta stopped eating. She said, why are you not eating? I said, climate change. She said, what is that? Anyway, I don't want to bash Greta. Greta, how did you get out? I know what you did. How did you escape? Why did you put me in the boot of a car? You know I hate cars. Look, get out of here. No, get away, go, no, stop, no, stop. I'm not Greta Turnberg, and I'm not Beata Turnberg. My name is Will Franken, and I wasn't supposed to be here at this climate change conference, but I snuck in because I want to be here because I'm going to tell you something, you guys are being fleeced. You young people, your youth is being sold out from under you. You're protesting for more taxes. Don't you see? This is bullshit. This is bullshit. Come on, Will. This is bullshit. I'm excited.